You are Locked On Cougars. Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the podcast. Plenty to get to ahead on today's show. We're going to talk BYU offensive line. Two great conversations, exclusive one-on-ones with BYU offensive line coach Daryl Funk, as well as rising senior guard Clark Farrington. Going to talk a lot of BYU offensive line, maybe the deepest position group across the board on the BYU roster this year. What to expect? What do they make of their teammates in the case of Clark and the guys he's coaching in the case of Coach Funk? All that and more ahead on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, my friends? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto around these parts is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Our goal here, my goal here, is to make you the smartest BYU fan in the room. And a huge thank you for downloading the show. If you're just checking us out for the first time, I am Jake Hatch. I work for the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City. I still say the Zone Sports Network all the time. I've been calling it that for well over a decade at this point. Old habits die hard, but I work with DJ and PK in the morning in my day job. And more importantly, I spend my, I guess, off hours talking BYU with you guys here on YouTube, as well as on uh, our regular podcast providers out there. We're available everywhere. So thank you for downloading the show. Today's show is offensive line focused, and we're going to start off today's show with a great conversation. BYU offensive line coach Daryl Funk had a great opportunity to speak with him one-on-one at BYU Football Media Day, a wide-ranging interview, uh, starting off a little bit uh, with his thoughts on where things stand with this offensive line. What are the expectations for them versus what more can Coach Funk say that any of his players have not heard from him already and making sure that they just kind of just stay engaged and carry on doing what they do? It's at the risk of being negative because if all you do is show them, okay, here's 30 plays in the year that could have got us over 200 yards rushing or another touchdown again, whatever it is, you can manufacture whatever you want. But they did so many good things that we obviously have to talk about that. But I, I'm pretty real with them. I don't worry about this group getting big headed or, or cocky or just thinking things are going to happen. I just, it's a feeling. You know, I've only been around them a little over a year, but you know, we've gone through the battles. But these guys did a lot of great things last year. And obviously, you know, we're going to miss Tyler, and but his numbers, you know, his his record that he set and everything, his, his linemen, his tight ends, it's our receivers that are willing to block, it's 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 the presence that, our, that Jaron has that make things easier to run the ball, a lot of things. But up front, I think of some of the things that people don't talk about, uh, you know, being a lot more efficient on short yardage and goal line, you know, had made that jump from the year before. and. And really, we're very consistent with that. Uh, and, and and yet, we had a couple we didn't get. So I can point out, you know, uh, the four minute. I've never had a team, an offense that performed in the four minute. You know, for us to you know, to finish uh, finish good defenses. You know, finish Utah at the end. Finish Arizona State. Finish Washington State. Uh, not let South Florida get the ball back. Yeah. Um, you know, a five minute or seven minute drive at Georgia Southern, a game winning drive essentially as it turned out uh, at USC. And that's not just linemen, that, that's tight ends. Obviously, it's running backs, but it was a mentality that these kids took another step up from the year before against better defenses. So they just have so much to be proud of. But they also know, and we talk to them all the time, just because that happened last year. Doesn't mean, I mean, you've got to start from square one again, and we've got to, you know, every, you know, we're going to be different things we see. We're going to have to evolve a little bit, we'll add a few things, and, and you're going to have to do it all again because you're going to have more of a target on your back. But, but I think, I think they're in the right mindset, especially for June 22nd. We've got a little bit of time. Uh, they'll be ready to rock by the time we start uh, camp. I know that. When it's with some individual guys, but Blake Freeland's getting a lot of press, especially when it comes to NFL draft. They see, they see the potential in him, and I actually covered him in high school, and he never played offensive line before he showed up here, but 
Where do you think he's made the most strides? And I guess second part, where does he still need to improve? Well, in, in, in the O-line world, he's still a baby. Yeah. I mean, because of like what you said, he didn't he play quarterback, then he was a fullback, tight end, outside backer. He came here as a defensive end. So Blake's a great kid. He's he's well grounded as well. He knows that he's got to get better in all areas. You know his his uh, you know his weight room strength, his his field strength. You know the I mean he plays. He's so tall. Technically, that's somewhat of a disadvantage in the run game because you've got to get down and get under people. Huge advantage in the pass game as athletic he is because he's so long to get around. But I thought he made, uh, just thinking back when I first got here, you know, we made some adjustments to a little bit what he was doing with his pass sets and the hands and different things, and I think that panned out well. I think he was responsible maybe for one sack last year on paper, whatever it was. Uh, so that was better. Uh, I thought his run blocking, because you know he had been on the right side the year before. You don't just automatically go to the other side. And, and I mean, it, it, you can do it fairly quick, but it still takes a little time. And he, as he went through the year, I thought his his run blocking got better and better, and and, and play side for sure. But you know, the, the fun thing, that some of the best plays of Blake and Clark on that side was the backside of run plays. I mean, Blake and Clark sometimes would take that whole backside and run them so far that you might say, well, that was a cutback run. It really wasn't. They took the guy five yards that way, and, and, and they did a good job with that. But I, I'd say without exception, Blake's you know, super, super talented that way. Obviously, he's got a bright future, but he's also, I think, super dialed in on what we're doing, uh, and he'll worry about the other stuff. Uh, I think most of these guys know what you, at the end of the day, for the next level, yeah, people can ask questions about you. People can look at your times. People can look at this and that, and that's part of it. They can see your, your measurables, all that. But at the end of the day, most guys rise or fall on the NFL boards with what they do on, on, on tape. That's what it comes down to. Now, but with him, like only really being in his third, maybe fourth year of playing online, um, he's got a huge upside. You mentioned Clark. Uh, he seems like a guy who's probably NFL bound in his own right, but he's been a stalwart for four years in this offense. Uh, what sets him apart from, I guess, other guards out there? Well, he's super tough for one reason. He's, I've not been around a tougher kid than that. You know, he's got good numbers in the weight room and field strength, which to me is maybe sometimes even more important what they do in the weight room. It's related. Mm -hmm. Super smart. Uh, the other thing about Clark, he doesn't care. Like he just got another All-American thing. He got so he doesn't. I mean, is he honored? Yes. Does he care about it? it's going to ever affect his game? No. Does he want to play in the league? Absolutely. But he doesn't make his daily work with BYU football and this season and everything about anything but just that. You know what I'm saying? He he his, he knows he, his chance will you know come in the league. I just he's, he's focused and mature beyond his years probably. But the other thing about him, he does things right in everything he does. He's a great student. He does things exactly right when it comes to team functions. He does things exactly right, and he. He was one of our big leaders, especially last year and even the year before, from what I'm told. But with James gone, I mean, he's he's to me the the true leader of the group. If you, if you look at his whole body of work, not only starts and games and all that stuff, but how he conducts business. And I, I'm just I couldn't be happier to to have him, you know, in the room. His younger brother Campbell got the freshman All-American citation this past year, but there seems to be a log jam in some ways just with the number of bodies you have on this offensive line. Where do you figure Campbell's going to slot in? Is he going to be a guard or is he going to be a tackle? I tell kids that are versatile like that, when you're versatile and can play, he can, he can play anything. He actually can play center, has played center too. He's played everything in practice. It's a godsend for a coach. It can be a real, not a, it can be a detriment to the kid because you get watered down a little bit. Now, once he finds his starting spot, whatever that'll be, because he, he could be an edge guy, he could be a guard. I don't see him 
playing center early in the year. I don't see that happening. He'll rep a little bit in practice just so he's ready. But, but once he gets that spot, he'll quit going everywhere. But he's just unique. Like I said, he had, I don't can't remember if I was saying to you guys, he had an unbelievable summer a year ago, which took him from a guy that I thought would be, okay, ninth, tenth travel guy, to a guy firmly in the conversation when we started the year. Now, he didn't win the starting job. But it's been a while since I saw a freshman come in and not bat an eye when a senior, or a, not a senior, but when Harris went down. It was junior, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he goes down. Uh, and that was, I can't remember, I guess that was our first injury. James maybe had already been, I can't remember. Chris Connor filled in well as well. But we didn't even miss a beat. I think it was South Florida. And not because we didn't miss Harris, because we did. He's a really good player. He's got great energy. He's, He's kind of a wild man sometimes, so he's kind of funny and kind of keeps things light. But uh, but Campbell did a great job, and I've said this. A couple other coaches have said this, just because of the way he, because he, I mean, he's he's the same as Clark in his preparation, his maturity. He's just not as big, strong, experienced yet. But he may be a hard one to keep out of the lineup um, right from the jump. I wouldn't. I think people sleep on him. I don't even use that term. That's kind of a I don't know, that's kind of a thing I see on Twitter all the time. I shouldn't even say it. But I think he's one to watch because he's just so smart. And, you know, once he gets his spot, he's going to be an unbelievable player. You already talked about Harris. I got two other guys I want to ask about. Connor Payu, who you already mentioned as well. James had, was in and out of the line for the last two years just with some of the injuries he dealt with. But it felt like, and this is just my perception, that Connor stepped in and they just said, kind of, didn't miss a beat, just kind of, just kind of rolled on. What does he need to do now to solidify his spot as the guy at center? Well, like you said, I mean, he came in and filled in admirably for James. Um, did we really think at the time we, you know, we didn't miss a beat with with James? I mean, you can't just miss that experience and start. So we did miss James, but Connor came in, really did a good job. I thought he was another one. I mentioned a couple of these guys did. But Connor from the first game of the year. I know he's playing guard to the last really a, a, a big increase in, in, in production and, and the way he played. Uh, now, what he has to do is beat Joe out, or someone has to try to beat out Joe at guard, or Joe, I, I don't know, but that's the first thing, because right off the bat, and it's how we repped it in spring, is Joe and Connor will probably take equal reps with the ones at center. They both play guard, Connor plays the left side. Uh, Joe plays the right. Connor can play anywhere too, but it's going to be interesting to see because you know Connor's another one. Um, just every every time you turn around, he's maybe a little quicker, or he's you know learned a different skill, or, or he's pick, he's really smart, so he, he knows the, the football end of stuff. But uh, yeah, that'll be. I can't say it's a head-to-head -head competition because yeah, it is at center, but. You know, Joe's also playing another position, so it's kind of a three or four way deal. It's going to be really interesting how it works out. But Connor's had a good uh, off season. You brought up Joe, the elder statesman. I talked to him last year. He said he was going to evaluate if he wanted to keep playing at the college level versus potentially turning pro. So I think he's 24 or 25 at this point, but he decided to come back. Do you feel like he's in the mix to have a starting position at some point here? What else does he need to work on? Oh, absolutely. Joe, when Joe's playing at the top of his game, he's clearly a guy that would be a really good starter. I mean, he ended up, you know, doing a really good job down the stretch at, at guard. He plays play center. Um, Joe's really athletic. He's he also has a he plays with energy and plays with aggression and kind of got a little mean streak to him. But but yeah, I was glad he came back. Um, it would have been easy for him to to say, well, you know, I'm getting older. Because and I, I think that's some of these kids. And I know it's been in the past. They leave early because they think, well. Their NFL window might be closing because of their age. And the guys I talk to, I'm far from an expert, is you know that prime age of the NFL offensive lineman is still going to be 27, 28, 29. You know what I mean? So to me, I think he made a great decision. And I was, I was happy. And I, I try to I try to not be too much of an influence on guys. You should go. You should stay, unless it's just clearly obvious.
but sometimes it is. Coach Jim Long, right? Taylor Long. His his Long. Taylor came back for his senior year, and he and uh, it didn't turn out to be a great decision for what he wanted to get done. He was the captain. We did not have a great year. He wanted to win the Big Ten title. That part didn't work out. But he improved from a mid to late round first rounder, or maybe a mid to the eleventh pick overall. So he didn't hurt himself that way. And. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's tough. And I've had other ones that have came back or not, depending on, that's always a hard, that's a fine line to walk as a coach. We just try to advise different things, but that was a good decision by Joe. And I'm excited, we'll, we'll see. Because last year, he got a little bit of a slow start because he got nicked in camp a little bit. And so really the, the Arizona game, he wasn't really at full go. In fact, I don't even think he started. I think Connor started and I just subbed him. Uh, so, uh, I hope we can avoid that this year and everything. But he'll, I like his energy and I, I like the way he plays the game. There you go, BYU offensive line coach Daryl Funk. A huge thank you to him for taking some time to sit down with me at BYU Football Media Day. Always great to catch up with these coaches, get their thoughts. And the best part of the time, the best time of year to do this is right around this time. Of course, those interviews were last week, but there is not a lot going on in these guys' lives. The recruiting scene has kind of died down. Camps are in the rearview mirror. They're getting ready to go on vacation. They're far more laid back this time of year than they are in season. So always fun to catch up with Coach Funk and you can tell he's pretty bullish on his guys. Guys like Joe Tukuafu, who he just finished talking about, he really likes the potential of this unit. I think it's very evident just listening to him talk about those guys. So we're going to hear from one of the guys he is coaching up, a guy who is on his way to the NFL. That is Clark Barrington, a guy that I always enjoy talking to. I think he's one of the underrated interviews on this BYU roster. We're going to hear from him, exclusive one-on-one -on -one with him, coming up here in just a minute. First, though, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. Absolutely love Built Bars, my friends. The best part about Built bars is they support BYU football. Built branded companies, many of you know this. If you don't know, they have a name, image, and likeness agreement with the entire BYU football roster. They are paying tuition for the walk-ons for BYU while also paying scholarship players just some extra walking around money. It's it's a great, great thing they got going on. If you want to help support that venture of Built Bar, get to Built.com right now and place your order there. Whether it's the Built Puffs, the Built Bars, or their myriad of other products that they have under the Built branded companies, you can support the venture that they have with BYU football by supporting Built Bar. The best part is we're going to save you some coin along the way too. Go to Built.com while you're there. Use the promo code LOCKED15, that is L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off your order, your entire order. Doesn't matter what you order, promo code LOCKED15 will save you that 15%. The best part is Built Bars are the best tasting protein bars that I've ever had. The macros on them are absolutely incredible between 150 and 170 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar packed with between 16 and 18 grams of protein. You will not find a better protein bar for the money. I assure you of that. So once again, that's promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. Get and join the best tasting protein bars and do it with our friends at Built Bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate your guys' patronage. If you're watching this and you're wondering, well, what breaking news, why isn't Jake breaking it down? I'm on vacation. I'm pre-recording these shows. I am in California. So uh, anything that breaks this week, I will have it for you guys next week when I am back in town after the 4th of July holiday. So just be aware if something crazy happens, which it happens a lot when I go out of town. And my wife actually says she can set her watch by it in many ways that something nuts is going to happen. But regardless, we'll react to that when I get back in town. So uh, time now to catch up with BYU guard Clark Barrington, one of the top 10 rated offensive guards in next year's NFL draft, according to NFL draft expert Mel Kuyper of ESPN. Clark is a great dude, a guy who is, I think, one of the toughest guys pound for pound. And he's He's a big dude. He weighs 300 pounds, but one of the toughest dudes on BYU's roster. Had a great conversation with him last week at BYU Football Media Day. And without further ado, let's let you hear from Clark Barrington. This is the final media, independent media day for BYU football before they go to the Big 12 next year. Uh, you've been to, what, three or four of these, I, I would imagine. How many How many have you been to? I think three. Okay. Yeah. Well, are you going to miss this at all? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the honesty. Like you, you said, and I think it's spoken as like a true offensive lineman. You, you kind of toil in anonymity, and you yeah. just kind of do your thing. But I think the biggest thing this year is you are starting to get some accolades. I think you saw that Phil still named you as a preseason All-American. What does it mean to you have that type of stuff on your, I guess, resume, for lack of a better term? Yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Um, it's cool to be noticed. It always feels good to be noticed. And but uh, just trying to keep that same mindset of 
hey, let's just grind away. Let's do the things I've been doing and, and do the small and simple things. And, and then, uh, you know, let, let the other things happen as they happen. Um, honestly, it doesn't mean a whole lot unless, you know, you can get the same title at the end of the season as well. And so just, just having that end goal in mind and, and wanting the best for me, best for the team, you know, and, and, and just kind of almost even whether it's good or bad, kind of letting it just bounce off and continue and doing what I'm doing and, and hopefully it'll work out. So Control the controllable, right? Exactly. exactly. Uh, when it comes to your game, you've been a starter for f- parts of at least four seasons now. What more do you feel like you need to improve on going into this year? Yeah, for sure. It's there, there, There's always things that, that I can improve on. And, and um, no, it's kind of just like, like the fine tuning and and making sure my first two steps are good, my hand placement is good, so that I can keep balance at all the time and, and good have good leverage. And, and, and so it's kind of just the small and simple things that, that you don't really think about all the time, but, but making sure they're kind of ingrained and it's muscle memory and, and doing those things. So, What's it like working with a guy like Blake Freeland? Yeah, for sure. It, it, it's fun. Um, he's a great dude, great player, and I think that's what I've been blessed with my whole life. Um, since since being here at BYU, I've played with, with some good dudes on the left side of the line. Got to play with Brady when I was young. James has been there at center the entire time. Now I got Blake out there with me, and, and I've hopped around on the right side a little bit, played with some guys over there that are great, and, and I think it's just, it's just fun, you know, just being able to play with, with great players as well and, and being able to go out and dominate. So. When it comes to offensive line play, you kind of are acknowledge it. It's nice to have guys who are also high-level players alongside you, and you guys have to work as a unit. The five, all five of you have to work in concert. Do you feel like the continuity coming back on this offensive line is going to be a major advantage for you guys this year? For sure. It's it's always nice to have people that you've played with right next to you. Um, and it's nice to have the depth that we have and the experience that we have. and, and it feels like we've been working with each other for forever. And so um, you can tell when we're out there practicing that, that we have been together, and, and, and it's a nice thing to have. So, How nice is it to know you got Jaron Hall back there and you've worked with him and you're familiar with just how he, how he operates? Yeah, for sure. That That's a great great blessing as well to have a guy back there that's as talented as he is. And, and even at the wide receiver group, the running back group, it's great to, to know that, you know, if we handle our job, they'll handle theirs and, and have that trust. So, I'm not sure there's too many families, just in football in general, who have had two freshman All-Americans in the family. How cool is it to see your brother break out like he did last year? Yeah, for sure. It's awesome. Uh, I, I loved seeing him do the things he was doing. Um, the start of the season seemed like he wasn't going to get any playing time. It would be a good backup. And... And as the season went on, injuries occurred, and, and we needed him to step up big time, and he did. And, and I'm just happy for him and the, and the All-American award that he got. And, and it's just a cool thing for, for him. So, Do you, I don't know, do you play the role of older brother and tell him, hey, this is where you screwed up, fix it? Uh, yeah. I think it's a lot easier to be more honest and open and maybe a little bit more harsh. <laughs> at times with, with somebody you've grown up with your whole life, right? Even in normal day life, you're going to tell them how it is because that's what you've been doing your whole life. And so it's it's more comfortable. It's more it's easier for, for, for you to do so for sure. But I think that's one thing that the O-line does really well is, you know, we understand that we are brothers. We're going to tell them how it is. We're going to figure it out together and, and move on. And, and it happens, so let's just move on and fix it. So. Okay, last thing from me. Who's the better athlete in your marriage? I know you got a softball wife. <laughs> I, I'm married to a softball player. She'll tell you she's the better athlete. Who, who do you say? Uh, I'll give it to her. Okay. Yep. Good Keep call. her happy. <laughs> happy wife, happy wife. Exactly. Clark Barrington, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. BYU guard Clark Barrington. A huge thank you to him for taking the time to sit down with me at BYU Football Media Day. Coming up on tomorrow's show, we'll round out our Media Day recap portion of this week. We'll catch up with BYU defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki. We'll also catch up with, I'm trying to remember who it was. <laughs> Probably should have, you know, had this note from, oh, Steve Clark, BYU tight ends coach. A great conversation as well. Both of those on tomorrow's edition of the show. So thank you for making us your first listen today and make sure you tune back in tomorrow to hear from both of them. Coming up on Friday, it is the one year 
look ahead. We are one year away starting Friday from BYU and the Big 12. We'll have that for you on a Friday edition of the show. So stay tuned with us all week long. We got you covered top to bottom here. Right now, I want to encourage you to go make your second listen. Our friends over the Lockdown Big 12 podcast. Josh Neighbors does an incredible job making sure you are apprised of everything you need to know about as a Big 12 fan, a BYU fan. As you get ready to go into the Big 12, you'll know everything that's going on through a BYU's new conference home. Get that free and available wherever you get your podcasts just like this one. All right, that'll do it for us. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and we'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. This has been the Locked on Cougars podcast. See ya.